When water freezes, it expands. That's why ice floats and why cans and jars bulge or explode in the freezer. On the other hand, when water is compressed, it melts. You need a lot of pressure. An ice cube that's 4 degrees Celsius below freezing can withstand around 500 times atmospheric pressure before it'll melt, but it will melt. So, if when you freeze water, it expands, and when you compress it, it melts, what happens if you try to freeze it while it's compressed? Like, what if you cool water below 0 degrees Celsius inside a super strong pressure vessel? that can't bulge or stretch. If the water is liquid, it's not under pressure, so below zero Celsius it should freeze. But if it's frozen, it expands, creating pressure, and so it should melt. Which means it should freeze. Which means it should melt. You see the problem. The pressure that causes melting is being generated by expansion that requires being frozen. It seems we've arrived at a paradox. If by paradox you mean phase diagram. You know, those pictures that tell you the phase of matter for a substance, whether it's a solid, liquid, or gas, for different combinations of temperature and pressure. On the phase diagram for water, you can see here that at normal atmospheric pressure, when you cool water down, it goes from a liquid to a solid, as you'd expect. And at minus 4 degrees Celsius and atmospheric pressure, water is frozen solid, but if you increase the pressure, the solid water goes back to a liquid. So what if you don't let the water expand when it freezes? Well, when water is below 0 degrees Celsius, it wants to freeze, but only some of it can, because any bits that freeze expand, which pressurizes the container and eventually the pressure builds up enough to keep any more liquid water from freezing at that temperature. On the phase diagram, we follow the line between liquid and solid in the direction of colder temperature and higher pressure. If you cool the container even more, then slightly more bits of water will be able to freeze and expand, until the pressure again builds up enough to keep any more liquid water from freezing. And so on. The colder you make the container, the higher the percentage of ice, and the higher the pressure in the container. This graph shows the percentage of ice versus liquid when you cool a fixed volume of water to different temperatures, and I've labeled the pressures that are generated at each temperature, too. As for whether the container ever completely turns to ice, well, looking at the phase diagram again, we see that once the temperature is low enough and the pressure high enough, the remaining liquid water can freeze into a different phase of ice called ice 3. And ice 3 contracts and becomes denser when it freezes, creating more space and allowing the entire container to freeze solid. Though some will still be our normal ice, called ice 1H, and some will be ice 3. So there is no paradox. The phase of water, it turns out, can be non-binary. Wait, water. What are you doing? Don't click away. I suspect you might be interested in this video's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a fun, interactive science and math learning platform for curious people young and old, professional and beginner. Brilliant is based off the principle that active problem solving is the fastest path towards mastery of a new concept or skill, not just lectures alone, and they have interactive courses ranging from logic to fundamentals of computer science to quantum mechanics to infinity and beyond. Literally, they have courses about infinity. To gain a deeper understanding of science and mathematics and to sign up for free, go to brilliant.org slash minutephysics. The first 200 people will get 20% off an annual premium subscription with full access to all of Brilliant's courses and puzzles. Again, that's brilliant.org slash minutephysics. And thanks to Brilliant for their support.